In the last video, we discussed the solution of an electric dipole. And in this problem, which I'll remind you, we had two point charges, minus Q and plus Q, on the x-axis. We were looking for the electric field at a distance right in the center, symmetrically, but along the z-axis. This is different from the problem of Halde, Resnick, and Walker, which you should also look at. But it's a common problem to be solved that people expect you to know. And we found the solution had a really interesting fact. If we drew the picture of our problem, we had this minus charge here, this plus charge right here, and right here at this point we found an electric field that went this away. In the opposite direction from our dipole, here, this P, we found our electric field went in this direction. And it was given by this very useful and important formula to note. And I said I wanted to come back and apply the binomial expansion. Now, this distance here is this distance R, which is the distance from one of these charges to this point. What we want to do is we want to take the case when we're what is called a far field approximation. When this distance might be inside of an atom and the distance that you're measuring is very far apart. So how, how do you get these dipoles? Well, an example is you could have a positive charge and you have electron around the atom. And if that electron was exactly symmetric, then the minus charge in essence is lying right over the top of the positive charge and they cancel out. But if you were to put a little electric field that would apply a force pushing the protons one direction, the nucleus if you would, and the electrons the other direction, then what you could end up with is you could have a slight positive charge here and the negative charge would slightly be over like this so that its average is like right that and now you have a dipole you have a slight displacement of the charge but it's inside the atom itself potentially and so there's no way you're actually measuring the field inside there you're measuring the effect of the field out here you know half a meter away 30 centimeters away so at a very large distance z is very large compared to this distance p that you're measuring and so that's what we want to do. And to do this problem, we want to do more than do a simple zeroth order approximation. We want to apply the binomial expansion, which is very useful in science and engineering problems. So I'll remind you some things that you should know from math class, and hopefully you do. If you don't, I suggest you watch the videos on the binomial expansion. And that is, if you have something that's 1 plus eta to the nth power, where eta is much, much less than 1. And really, we could say that that says the absolute value of eta is much, much less than 1. Then you can write this as 1, approximately, 1 plus n times eta. This is an outstanding approximation to get you at least two terms. If you just say, well, eta is real small, I just won't count it, then you get the zeroth approximation, one. This gives you a little better. And what's really nice about this is, is that if you plotted this, what you would have is that you're saying that any function, no matter how complicated of this form, looks like one plus, if you're plotting this against eta, this has a slope of n. So you're replacing a complicated function such as the one right up here with basically a straight line. Now it only works when this eta is small. So you have to get it with a small thing and you have to get it in this form. And our expression right above here is not of that form right now. So that's my first task how to get that into this form. Well, it turns out that's not too difficult. So let me write what we have. We have the electric field is equal to minus k times p vector 
and then we have d over 2 squared plus we said that we had z squared and this is all to the 3 halves power so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do anything to the top but I need to get this so that this is 1 one of these terms is 1 and the term that's left is very small now so if z is much greater than d then I want to factor z out and I can do that by factoring out a z squared to the 3 halves that's a z cubed and I have 1 plus d over 2z squared to the 3 halves power so all I've done there is algebra I took this z squared out of all the terms and then that was to the 3 halves so the square root of a square gives me a first power and then I cubed it now if d over 2z is much much less than 1 then 1 plus d over 2z squared to the 3 halves power can be solved using the binomial and here's how this right there that's my n this right there that's my squiggly so what I have is that d over 2z squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power is approximately now I need to be careful I could do it 3 halves but actually I want to do it where I got this on the bottom so I'm going to let that be minus 3 halves so then I'm accounting for the fact that's in the denominator so what is this this is 1 minus 3 halves times squiggly which is d over 2z squared or it's approximately 1 minus 3 eighths d over z squared and now I put that in to my formula above and I get that my electric field is approximately minus K times P over Z cubed 1 minus 3 eighths D squared over Z squared or it's minus K P over Z cubed but then it has a plus k p times the 3 eighths d squared over 1 over z to the fifth so let's see what this thing is telling us this thing says that first the electric field appears to follow us 1 over z cubed but if you want a little better approximation that slightly underestimates it. It's slightly better than that by this term that goes as v to the fifth. Now, something else. But r squared is approximately d over 2 squared plus z squared which is just approximately z squared since z is much much greater than d so therefore we could also write that the electric field is approximately minus k p over r cubed as we did before but it's also got a slight approximation
1 over r to the fifth, where we're not really measuring the true r. We're simply where we're using r equal to d. I'm sorry, r equal to z. So in other words, we're not really measuring the true distance from that point charge to where we're measuring. We're just measuring the distance, for instance, from one of those atoms. You'll see both of these type of things. When people talk about Van der Waals forces in chemistry and such, and they get the fact that these fields and forces are not 1 over r squared, it's because of these type of things. And how close you're to 10 depends on how many terms. If you want to r is really, really far away, maybe you can ignore this term. If r is not far enough away and you need a better approximation in engineering, then maybe you've got to add an extra term here. Remember, this r is not the same r that was in our exact formula before. This r is really calling this z. So in many ways, I prefer to do this, but that's not usually the way people write it. They'll usually write it in this term r down here. All right. We'll talk about some other electric field problems in the next video.